Hey, good morning. Four, hang on, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I've made a commitment to do ten girl push ups every morning or every day. Um, until Christmas, by which time, you know, it ought to become easy for me. It's a little difficult now because I haven't been exercising for a while, except for walking. And I got a little arthritis in my shoulders, so that's why I'm only doing 10. And I'm doing girl push-ups. But, you know, I do this first thing in the morning because, you know, before everything else starts going on during the day, and I get distracted, and the next thing I would know, it's time to go to bed. Anyhow, I'm going to make some coffee in a second, but I just wanted to tell you, if you're trying to put a good habit into your life, if you can link it with something that you always do, like, for example, one thing that I could do, you know, I always have coffee in the morning. So what I could do, oh, hey, Josh. Josh is watching from Australia. And it would be good evening to you or good night. <laughs> and it's 7.20 a.m. on the East Coast of the United States here. But if you're trying to put a good habit into your life, link it with something that you always do. So I always have coffee in the morning. I mean, I don't even have to think about it. It's a habit, okay? Don't have to think about it. You just do it. It becomes second nature. So if I can link doing my girl push-ups with having coffee, then I'll be much more likely to keep on, you know, doing the girl push-ups every day, right? Oh my gosh, it's it's om it's going on midnight in Australia. Whoa, you're up late. Well, listen, so yesterday I tried the cocoa truffle uh, coffee for the Nespresso original line. I have a Pixie machine. That's the name of the machine, the Pixie. And um, I made the mistake of just because it smelled, it had a cocoa kind of smell, of expecting it to taste like hot cocoa. It's coffee, it's not hot cocoa. If I want hot cocoa, I need to make hot cocoa. But I decided what I would do is I would take some no sugar plain oat milk and froth it with some, oh here, let me get it, with some chocolate caramel truffle skinny syrup. I'm gonna do that right now. I've already got that in here. And I'm gonna see uh, if I brew the cocoa truffle coffee into that, if it is kind of more of a, you know, cocoa sort of a treat. Now, the, I, don't get me wrong. The cocoa truffle coffee is really good, but you got to remember, it is coffee, right? So it has some chocolatey notes. It has a chocolatey um, aroma to it, but it has a coffee taste. So, and it's good. It's got a good, strong kind of coffee taste, but I want something just a little bit more festive. Uh, and you know, by the way, if you're making coffee for people during this holiday season, if your coffee has a crema or if you're frothing up some milk, you can shake on a little bit of cocoa powder or cinnamon or even get some little crushed up peppermint chips and throw it on top. That'll make it real fun. Okay, let's see. So in my milk frother, I go ahead and I fill it up to just above that little whirly thing down in the bottom that whips it all up. And I've also got my skinny syrup in there with the oat milk. This looks like it's going to be ready pretty soon. Oh, it's ready. Okay. 
I was going to say because the froth is almost all the way to the top. Okay, so. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, my gosh. Now, remember, I'm making an espresso, which is only 1.35 ounces. So it's okay that there's so much in this cup. Okay. Oh, got to put the coffee in the machine. Okay, it's heating up. You see the light flashing? So when it stops flashing, I'll know that it's heated up. Also, this machine, I don't know if they all do this, but this one sort of goes <laughs> right before it's all heated up. And it lets out a little steam. So hopefully that's, hopefully that's normal and it doesn't mean that things are possibly going to explode. So here we go. Also, when you make your espresso into the already frothed milk, let it sit just a few seconds and it starts layering up. Ooh, now you may say, look at all of that milk and froth that she's got in there. You know, is she even going to be able to taste the coffee? The thing is, remember, this is espresso, not just plain old coffee. It's very concentrated. See how those layers are forming? So pretty. Of course, the proof is in the pudding, right? Or in the coffee. Okay. Oh, let me just taste the froth. Oh my gosh, that froth is really good. I can really taste the chocolate and the caramel in it. That's fun. Okay, here we go. Is this going to be like having hot cocoa or what? Oh my goodness, do you know what this tastes like? No, it doesn't taste like hot cocoa. It tastes like uh, coffee that you've put in a liqueur, like uh, Tia Maria or I don't know if they still make that, but it's a, um, anyway, it tastes chocolatey and coffee-ish and sweet, and there's a hint of the caramel. Oh my goodness. Here I am, almost 7.30 a.m., and I'm having something that tastes more like dessert after dinner. Oh. And it's still got, it's got a nice, strong coffee flavor to it, mixed with a sweet chocolate and caramel. Oh, it's very good. I really recommend this to you. So this is the Nespresso Cocoa Truffle, which is, uh, says a vibrant dark cocoa flavor meets the cereal roasted notes of a Latin American Arabica espresso. And then I used no sugar plain oat milk and chocolate caramel truffle skinny syrup. Although I'm sure you could use any sort of chocolatey syrup or even maybe you could brew this over a piece of chocolate. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to enjoy my coffee. I hope that you enjoy your coffee and your day. Oh, Josh is asking, have I had any more about Grace? Heard any more about Grace? And yes, let me tell you, he is right now 
um, living with a man who has some medical needs that Grayson could help with, mostly um, with being able to help the man to be able to get up, sort of, they call it a bracing dog, because, you know, he would help to, I guess he's, I don't know if he pulls the man up or stands there and the man leans on him or just helps give the man balance. I, I'm, I don't know all the details, but if they hit it off together and they bond, then he will start service dog training with his with this man um, in early December. You know, and they're keeping me posted on him. He wears a service dog harness. Oh, God. Still, I still miss him. Gee whiz. Um, but I feel like he has a purpose in life that's really important. It makes me happy, even though I'm crying. Oh. Anyway, he wears a service dog harness, you know, and it says, do not, please do not pet me or whatever, and service dog, and he's, you know, learning to get used to some of the routines that he'll need to know. So that's where he's at. Thank you for asking.